Hello, can you hear me? I think you can. <laughs> um, welcome to my talk. Um, and um, who am I? Um, my name is Shanali, as you can see in the slides and everything. I uh, work for Red Hat from starting from this week. I worked at Red Hat before for five years, um, and I've been trying to get back ever since, <laughs> and I finally got back. Um, and um, I've, my background is mostly FOSS, uh, Linux, uh, desktop mostly, but other things too. Um, and most of it has been in, in C, uh, and some of it is in this obscure language called Walla. Um, but lately I've been more excited about Rust, and that's why I'm talking about Rust here. Um, my hobbies are flying and uh, uh, cats. <laughs> well, it's not a hobby, but um, I have a cat and I like cats. Um, and what am I talking about today? Um, it's um, about Rust uh, combined with GStreamer. Um, and uh, it's inspired by a talk by uh, Sebastian Droke. Um, he's a GStreamer um, hacker. Um, has been long for a long time. And um, he's uh, really huge on, on Rust. And he's, he has made uh, GStreamer bindings uh, for Rust. And, made all the interoperability possible. So he's the actual hero here. I'm just presenting about it, uh, his work mainly. Um, and there's a lot to cover, so I will go very fast. Um, if there's any problem, I can, uh, I can slow down. And, um, just, just ask me questions, and I'll, I'll explain. Um, uh, so first of all, let's talk about Rust. What, what's that all about? Um, it's a system programming language like uh, C, C++, uh, Go, um, but the, uh, there is a lot of emphasis on both safety um, and efficiency um, at the same time. It's one of the first languages that emphasize that in this um, core design uh, as, a, as a main thing, uh, both of these features at the same time. Um, and it, has, it does it with the concept of zero cost abstractions. Uh, so you have high-level abstractions uh, like iterators and, and stuff like that uh, that makes programming easy, but um, the inside the implementation is always um, uh, zero cost. So uh, you are, you're doing the same thing you will do in C and C++, but you're using a high-level API, and uh, it's easier. Um, and it's also safer, not just easier. Um, and... Uh, Another thing about safety is that the main uh, way to do it is like it doesn't allow raw pointer access. Um, and um, that means you won't have any DREF ring, uh, you won't DREF um, any dangling pointers, you won't DREF any uh, null pointers. And actually, there is no null pointers in, in, uh, in Rust, as you see later. Um, but the thing is, the world is not safe yet completely. So you need to access uh, uh, C libraries and uh, um, other languages um, code from, from Rust and the other way around. So for that, you have something called unsafe code, where in, in Rust you can uh, specify the unsafe keyword and put braces around the code. And then you have a bit more access to pointers, and you can do a lot more pointer arithmetic and stuff. It's still not as unsafe as it would be in C and C++, but uh, still, it's com uh, compared to normal Rust code, it's, uh, it's unsafe. Um, but the good thing about that is that once you uh, mark your unsafe code as unsafe, which Rust will like, make sure that you do, um, whenever there's something wrong, there's a memory corruption or anything, you know where it is. You, you, you can just go to the unsafe part and, and debug that part and just ignore the rest because that, that, is, un, that is safe anyway. Um, it has uh, the concept of non-mutable state by default. Um, which is, again, the same thing. You, um, if you have a problem with anything, it's most certainly in a, in a mutable state. It's, it can't be in state that is not mutable. Um, so um, you, only, um, uh, you only suspect the mutable state, and then it's, it's easier, it gets easier to debug issues, any issues. Um, and it also has strict ownership semantics. So in C and C++, you would have um, access to a resource, and someone frees it, and you still have a reference to it, and you, you have crashes and stuff like that for, because of that. And the reason is that it doesn't have the concept of ownership semantics, uh, so you don't, uh, there is no uh, concept of owner at all, except for some uh, C and uh, C++ modern APIs that 
uh, do it, but that's the API. That's not uh, through compiler. The compiler doesn't know anything about ownership. Um, in many high-level high languages, the, most of the modern one, it's done through garbage collector. Um, so um, uh, it, it makes it much more uh, safer uh, to access memory um, because uh, you leave the uh, freeing of memory to the garbage collector and it does it. As, but it's not an efficient approach. Like there is nowadays really, really efficient garbage collectors, but still it's using uh, your, your user's CPU and stuff. So it's, uh, uh, it's one approach, but uh, Rust doesn't do that. Rust doesn't take that approach um, because it, it, wants to be efficient. it wants things to be efficient. Um, so as I said, ownership semantics, strict ownership semantics. So you have only uh, one and one own, uh, owner to a, uh, to a resource. Um, and um, you, uh, if, for example, this code, it won't, it won't compile because um, you pass the ownership. When you assign S, uh, S1 to S2, you pass the ownership of the resource that S1 was pointing to, to S2. And S1 does not have a resource assigned to it anymore. So you can't use S1 anymore. Um, but, um, and also like the same with functions, like when you pass by value, you, you pass the ownership to that function and you don't have the ownership anymore. So this code won't compile either. Um, and there's one exception to this rule that is copy types. Uh, so sh small uh, data types that are not very heavy, like integers, booleans, stuff like that, um, or characters. And they, they, are all, uh, they all implement a trait called copy. And that, makes, that allows them to, to be passed around uh, as copies. So um, in the previous example, if this wasn't a string, uh, an in integer, and I pass it to the sum function, um, it won't pass the, uh, uh, the ownership to, to the function, but uh, just a copy. And you won't have any problem with that code. In, in, like this code will compile if it was integer, not string. Um, but like a lot of data types, most data types you will use, they, will, they are not, it won't be very efficient to implement copy trade for them. Um, you will be copying a lot of memory for no reason. Um, and, um, and you can't get by just by passing values only. So you, have some, you need some ways to um, get around this restriction of Rust, but in a safe way. And one of the first ways is uh, borrowing, which is called pass by reference in C++, um, where you borrow uh, the value to another variable or another function temporarily, and then um, uh, you get the value back when, you, when it's done. So this, this code will, will compile because you're just borrowing um, uh, the, the value. Um, but if it was a mutable uh, borrow, it was, uh, S2 was mutable, then um, this won't work because you, you cannot have a mutable reference to a resource uh, while another uh, 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 variable or something is pointing to the same resource because that is like calling for catastrophe, you know, memory problems. If you have one, one is mutating while the other one is still having read access or write access as well. Um, but the problem is bor uh, borrows is that it's temporary. Um, you cannot keep it. Yeah, if I borrow it to a function it, and it wants to keep it in a struct, the same uh, data, uh, it can't do that because it's, it's just temporary. It doesn't have access after the function is uh, complete when it returns. And so for that, we have other data types. Um, uh, you have something called RC, um, which, is, which stands for reference counting. Um, and uh, with this, you can have uh, multiple access to the, to the same resource. But um, since it's provided by Rust, it, the, the implementation ensures that it's done in a safe way. So it's not left to you, the, um, uh, ensuring that uh, there is no uh, memory corruption or anything. Um, and you, you just use this API to, to share the same resource between multiple users at the same time. And you can keep it in a struct. It's, it's not temporary. So. Um, but it's read-only. Um, if you want write access, I'll, I'll get to that later, but um, if you want write access, you, um, um, you use something called cell. You put uh, this resource in the cell, and then you put that in the RC, and then yeah, you go on from there. Um, but um, I, why, why does my uh, presentation uh, title uh, fearless uh, multimedia. The reason is uh, something, a concept in Rust that exists called fearless concurrency. And, the and it's because uh, Rust ensures that most of the problems you have with multiple threading do not, do not happen. Um, and um, uh, that, that applies very nicely to multimedia, as I'll show later. Um, 
And um, we have the same, like um, RC I mentioned before, it, it can be used from the same thread, but it's not, it's not possible to use it for multiple threads because it's, it's not atomic reference counting, so it's not thread safe. But it's much lighter than this type I'm talking about now, uh, ARC. Um, and if you, have, if you are sharing data between the same threads, uh, then you are better off using RC because it's more efficient. It doesn't do locking or anything like that. Um, but if you want to share between threads, then you need something a bit heavier, and that's ARC, and it ensures that it's, the reference counting is all atomic and stuff. Um, it's not that heavy comparatively, but it's slightly heavier. So. Um, and as I said, RC only gives you read-only access, um, and in a single thread, you will use RC with cell or something. And in the uh, same way, um, in multiple uh, threads case, you will have, you, you'll use something called mutex, uh, where you have a data in it, and uh, you, uh, each time you want to have access to it, you lock uh, it, like, just like usual mutexes you will see in other programming languages. But then you, uh, the way you pass it around between different threads is you put it in an arc, um, and then you can use it from different threads. Um, and that was like a really quick introduction to how Rust works and what Rust is about. Um, as I said, I have a lot to cover, so I can't give you a really good uh, intro. Um, we, we come to now GStreamer. Um, GStreamer is a multimedia framework, so if you want to make an audio player or a video player or anything to do with audio and video, uh, GStreamer is, is a good framework to do that. It's LGPL. Um, you can use it in proprietary software as well, so it makes it very popular among uh, people who want uh, proprietary multimedia solutions based on open source, sol uh, open source software. Um, that's the concepts, uh, the main basic concept of GStream are extremely simple. Um, it's, you, uh, it, it has a concept of uh, elements and pipelines. Um, a pipeline is a combination of elements. It's like uh, a bit like Lego, um, so you put different elements together to achieve a particular goal. Um, and the, the way you connect to uh, different elements is co something called paths. The dark blue, darker blue things in, in this uh, um, diagram, uh, they are paths, and that's how you connect them. I'll talk a bit more about that later. Um, and that was a really simple example, and it was uh, abstract, but this is a real example, a, a, simp a real example of a very simple pipeline. If you want to play um, a video in um, AUG format uh, with Vorbis audio and Theora video, um, this is a pipeline you can use. Um, what, what you do is you have a file source, you connect it to a demuxer, and demuxer um, uh, demultiplexes the audio and video parts, and then you connect it to different um, decoders, and then you, the sync, sync is the player, actually. Um, and for example, in this case, audio sync would be a pulse audio sync or something like that. Um, um, and the thing is, you, when you connect elements, um, you connect actually their paths. And paths have something called uh, GST caps, which is, stands for capabilities. And capabilities tell you what they can handle, right? Um, in, t in case of uh, uh, Vorbis decoder, uh, the sync uh, um, pad will say that I can, uh, I can handle um, uh, Vorbis uh, uh, data. Uh, and nothing else. So you can't connect it to, uh, for example, something that is giving you MP3 data. So um, with, with the help of caps on pads, you, you, can, you know which one can connect and which one can't connect. And that's how um, in GStreamer they accomplish um, uh, auto connections. So there's, there's these elements that look at these capabilities and then they connect on the fly, which, which one connect to each other and yeah. And it, it, so this, you can uh, easily automate all of this in one element that does this auto um, plugging. It's a very much plugin based. So all these elements that you, uh, you will use, um, they are provided by external plugins. Um, and um, that, that's the beauty of it. Like you can replace any element uh, with another and you can have better capabilities in one element than the other. And, it will be higher ranked and it will connect automatically and stuff. Um, and it's uh, written in C, um, like ma most of GNOME infrastructure and, and libraries. Um, and um, it's multi-threaded um, because uh, it tries to utilize the, the, as many CPUs you have, so it has to be multi-threaded. 
uh, uh, the GStreamer API, they have designed it so um, after a few iterations so that uh, apps don't have to usually care about threads. Sometimes they do, but most, like, most often they don't. Uh, but plugins, um, there's more, uh, more times in plugins. If they're simple plugins, then simple are providing simple elements, then uh, probably not. But if they are a bit complex, then they need to care about that there's thread and threads and stuff. Um, so yeah, the threads are important there. Um, it's, um, it, it is object-oriented uh, using uh, the G-Object uh, library. Um, and um, why, uh, why is Rust relevant in, in multimedia? Um, first of all, uh, parsing media formats is not, are not safe. Um, so um, especially from untrusted sources, there was even like a recent case of FLV uh, decoder uh, being used to um, take over uh, a, a system um, in Ubuntu, I think it was at least. Um, so they, 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 those things happen. So and, and if you do it in C, it's uh, extremely unsafe. Um, and multithreading is extremely hard, especially in C and C++. They are really, really hard to get right. Um, so that also brings Rust because uh, Rust is uh, like it makes multithreading really, really easy and uh, safe. And mutability and ownership uh, uh, maps well. Um, the concepts, uh, the, how the GStreamer has these types and everything, they, they, they map really well with, uh, with Rust. Um, I have to go really fast now. Um, GST uh, mini object, for example, this is just an example. Um, it's, um, so they try to make things safe with API, but it's still C, so you, they cannot ensure, they cannot tell compiler that we want this. Uh, so like this GST mini object, it's read only if, you're, if the reference count is only one. Um, and but it uh, sorry it, it's um, uh, you can write to it you can modify it if it's only one reference count to it um, but if you have multiple reference count that means there are multiple owners of the same so you cannot modify it at that time uh, but this uh, assumes that you you do reference counting and you increase and decrease the reference uh, which is not always the case um, so you cannot ensure that with C but with Rust you can ensure these things. Um, and avoid, avoid a lot of memory problems. As I said, in C, you can do so much uh, wrong. Um, and C is an archaic language. It's not just unsafe. It's really old, and it shows you know, when, you, when you work with it. It's really hard to, to work with. So there is the GStreamer bindings. As I said, uh, Sebastian Drog wrote these. Um, he's also writing a bunch of plugins in Rust uh, based on these bindings. And uh, there's a lot of plugins already there. And yeah, I hope that it keeps growing the GStreamer plugins. Um, a simple example here is uh, uh, this code. Um, as I mentioned, in pads you have capabilities, and uh, a single pad can have multiple capabilities. So um, that's why it's in plural, uh, caps, and each capability is a se separate structure in a cap. Um, this code tries to get the, uh, the first uh, structure it has in it, the first capability, um, then it removes the same one, and then it uh, sets uh, a property on it. Um, this code will compile fine equivalent code in C, but in Rust, uh, as you will see, it won't compile um, because it doesn't let you do unsafe things. The first error you get is like, um, like the set method is not found, and the reason is that uh, the, first, um, the first line, it's not uh, giving you um, a structure. Like C on C, you will get a structure or a null pointer. So if you don't check for null, you will have a crash. Uh, but in this case, you get uh, something called in Rust option, which is an enum. And um, so we can, we can handle that um, now. So uh, what we do is we say um, uh, the, this enum is either sum or none. So if it's sum, that means you have a value, where you have a valid value, and you can use it then. Uh, but if it was none, then you can't really use it, and that makes it very safe because it's not a null pointer that you can dereference, but it's an enum that you need to parse. Um, so we are parsing it here, and we are saying if it's some, give, me, give it to me, the structure, and then you say remove. This, it's, the rest is the same. Um, but this won't uh, work either because there's other issues, um, like the, the, all the issues that exist in this code, but C compiler would not let, wouldn't tell you about those. Um, and now we get a lot of errors. And the reason is that um, you're trying to modify something for which you didn't get a mutable reference. So this time we get mutable references. So first of all, capabilities, we get a mutable reference to that. And then we get a mutable reference to the structure. 
and then we try to do the exact same thing that we, that we were trying to do in the first place. Um, and then you get an error that um, you cannot borrow, um, you borrowed, uh, when you did uh, cdot uh, get mute structure, you borrowed also C as mutable reference. And in that scope, the C is already borrowed mutably. And as I said earlier, you cannot borrow the same thing, uh, same resource mutably multiple times. You, you can only borrow it once in the same scope. Um, so that's why there is this error of you, you're borrowing mutably twice. Um, and um, so we now solve the simultaneous mutability. Um, you get a mutable um, uh, uh, caps, and then, then we remove first uh, the structure, and then we get a mutable reference, and then we set anything on it. This code won't actually work because you removed the structure already, so you won't get a structure out of it. Um, and you will get a none, and it will not work. Uh, but you, it's safe. It doesn't work, but it's completely safe. Um, and uh, Rust compiler ensured that you did that. And now it will build just fine. It won't have any problems. In a closing note, I just want to say, try not to write new projects in C and C++. They are very unsafe languages. People think that they are really good at them and they won't make any mistakes and they will be fine. But no, no nobody is perfect, nobody. So you will make mistakes and it can cost a lot of problems for, for your users, for your customers, then for you as well, it's a maintenance hell. Um, so uh, always consider Rust if you want to write something efficient um, instead of C and C++. Um, that's it. Thanks. Thanks. C. Sebastian Drog, as I mentioned. What do you think? Huh? The uh, sorry, he asked uh, who wrote the uh, Rust interface to the C APIs. It was uh, one person. It was mostly one person, yeah. He used other people's work as well, like uh, the people who did GTKRS and stuff, and they're collaborating a lot. Um, and we have these, um, uh, every six months, uh, Rust Gnome Hackfest, and they're all there, so th we, yeah. It depends, like, what do you mean by, because it, it, it's a moving target, you know, like, there's always new APIs in C, uh, in, on C level, so you have to cover that. And I, I think it was uh, six months or so that they had something that they could use and they can create plugins. Uh, uh, it depends on how much time he used, like, full time, you know, like, it, it, he does other things too. Uh, yeah, no, it's not. Uh, anyone else? I'd like to ask that this multimedia coding often uses the SSC or AVX instruction set to accelerate the coding and encoding. And how does, how does this phrase with Rust? Can you use SSC or AVX? There is, I, I, I don't know if it's been, oh, sorry. <laughs> um, so the question was that um, do, does a GStreamer use SSC and all those uh, intrinsics? Uh, uh, and how does uh, Rust, uh, how do you do that in Rust, right? That's yes. the question. Um, yes, uh, GStreamer uses it, uh, like all the hardware capabilities it possibly can. It depends on the plugin developer, right, how, how they develop it. But yeah, usually they try to. So the Rust language has some intrinsic for this? Uh, Rust language, I was about to get to that. So in Rust, um, uh, they have like uh, SSE uh, support. Um, last I checked, it was about to be merged. But I, I think it has been merged already, the SSC support, at least in the nightly. Um, so at, uh, I'm pretty sure in, in the 2019 Rust, it will be a major part of it, um, because a lot of people ask for this. Almost, I think, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Sorry, uh, the, the question was if there is 100% uh, uh, coverage of the C API in Rust. Um, the answer is I'm not sure. I think there is like uh, at least 99%. Um, so yeah. All right, no questions. <laughs> um, cool, thanks for coming. <laughs>